Thank you, Cole. Um, I'll hand over okay. to you, mate. Uh, I'm just going to go through today just a few things. Um, now, I'm going to get into the interesting stuff, which is what people have done to convert machinery. And this, <laughs> there's some weird and wonderful machines out there that people just dream up. This was in quite a few years ago now in, in South East Queensland. And it was it, it just simply a, a, a chisel plough that this fellow uh, put a seed box on it and then he's put narrow points on the bottom and that sewing tubes. And he must have thought it was a really good machine because he painted, painted John Deere green. So <laughs> he, he uh, uh, but it did, do, did a good job for him. Question is, uh, about this is just related to pasture cropping. The great there's there's a lots and lots of advantages in pasture cropping and sowing crops in this manner. And the greatest is is, is we can uh, we we can improve our grasslands and our pastures uh, in 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 huge in species diversity. Now that photo is the same paddock. The bottom one is the same paddock as the top ones in. And a uh, huge difference. And that's quite a few years uh, difference between about 20 years, really, or di almost. Now, if you look at the, the the original photo, there's hardly any perennial grasses in that. Those dry, stalky bits are, are native perennial grasses. So I didn't start with, I started with virtually no perennial native grasses. And um, I only just found this photo only the last few days, actually. Uh, so, which is really interesting with, with what I, when you look at what I started with, a lot of people think that I started with a grassland. I certainly didn't. I have a grassland now. And the reason that grassland it, grassland uh, now has, has, has been restored is because of pasture cropping and good grazing management. The people that are really successful with pasture cropping are people that focus on perennial pasture species. The people that, that, um, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that focus on that, on, on the perennial pasture species are the ones that, that get great uh, soil health benefits as well. If you don't uh, focus on, uh, on perennials, on keeping, keeping perennial plants in there, you're actually just simply zero tilling. And you will not improve soil nutrient cycling, you will not improve soil structure, and you will not improve the soil ecosystem. And my your, your bottom line, your, your profit very much either. The perennial plants are, are vitally important for many things, for, for uh, um, managing droughts um, as, and, 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 and profit. And not only that, what I've got down the bottom, you won't produce very much stock food if you keep killing perennial plants. So it's very important, whatever you're doing, to, uh, to keep those, those perennial plants in there. They, they can be native or they can be introduced. Plants doesn't matter too much, but keep them in there. Well, it, it does matter when you start looking at, at, at restoring soil ecosystems, but that's another story. Yeah, very cool. Uh, Helen, I'm just wondering if you can hear us okay and that if you have any feedback or would you, you'd like to chime in uh, to the conversation here and ask Colin any questions? She might not, they might not be connected. That's okay, worth a crack. Um, how about you, Therese? Is there anything uh, that you'd like to ask Colin specifically while, while we've got him? Yeah, um, absolutely. I, it's a, an absolute beginner's question, but that's where I'm at. Um, Colin, with these um, the multi-species that you're talking about, do you have to sow them every year or do some of them kind of come back through seed that gets kind of um, stopped into the, into the soil? Yeah. yeah, no, that's a great question. Most of them are annuals. Uh, they're, they're, they're uh, very productive, fast-growing growing annual plants. Um, but in saying that, you can add some, in, or include in that mix some things like uh, plantain and chicory. Uh, and, and, and some people are sowing some of their, their perennials at the same time. It's a little bit risky doing that, sowing perennials at the same time as them because perennials don't compete all that well against those fast growing annuals. So they're mainly, yeah. there's a few reasons that, that we're sowing them. Like I, I do quite a lot of talks on that, um, different talks to different people, different, different, yeah. Um, 
there's a lot of advantages in, in those multi-species crops that they will prime the soil and fix hard compacted soils to start with. Um, and I usually recommend people sow those multi-species crops uh, for, for about two years before they sow a permanent perennial pasture. And um, uh, uh, mainly because then, then it'll prime the soil uh, to get a better result with their perennial pastures um, and get nutrient cycling and, and fix the soils quite rapidly. Uh, many advantages in them, uh, as well as producing very high quality stock feed and a lot of high quality stock feed. Okay, thanks very much for that. Just realise I'm sitting in the dark here. <laughs> that, yeah, there, he help. there he is. <laughs> um, well, it's not dark in WA. <laughs> no, no. Oh just, no, you're still in the middle of the afternoon. We've just had lunch, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and one other thing I'd just like to touch on, Colin. You mentioned that you would be better moving away from the conventional N and starting to move towards uh, verma vermiculture. Um, compost tea like extracts and things like that. Is there a reason you say that and and why? I think so. Um, uh, mostly from soil health, the soil health side of things, although the main driver of soil health is actually plants. Yeah, if we grow grow more plants and more plant diversity, we will improve soil health. Um, but I think we can do it faster if we if we use um uh, uh, compost extracts uh, and, and bi at least biological type products. Um, I, I've actually used them over the years. Tri tri I've trialed just about everything here, yeah. uh, except compost extract. I haven't used that. Um, but I think I'd be better off to do that uh, and move that way. It, it does require liquid injection, which I do have on my machine, so I could do it. Um, there, there's uh, some worm products uh, uh, which I'm I'm seeing results. I'm mean, sort of been involved, or I just keep a close watch on people that are trialing. One of them is Worm Hit, which is a, a worm uh, um, product made it made into uh, pellets like fertilizer, um, and people are getting pretty good results with that. Not overly expensive. Um, one of the problems now with conventional fertilizer is the cost of it. I, I don't know how the cropping people are, are surviving with it. There's huge cost. So. If we could get our soils healthier, we're, and what I've just spoken about today, you definitely can get soils healthier, mm. um, then cycle nutrients and make nutrients available, um, then we can start winding our fertilizers down. How it, and in saying that, I, I have reduced fertilizers by 70% here anyway, um, from when I first started. Uh, so I'm not using a lot of fertilizer anyway. Okay, so if there's any other questions, um, please get them through while we've got Colin here. Uh, we will be doing more of these catch-ups and as hopefully we get a few more um, farmers on the call in the next ones. But if you have any suggestions on, you know, topics that you'd like to hear more of uh, from Colin or, or Judy or any of our um, educators, please even do, that's what that platform is for as well. To post on there and say, we'd like to know more about this or we're struggling with this um, or we've had a win with this, you know, and you, maybe you can talk yeah. about that. Um and yeah, and I think it's just important that we, we don't drag this out too long, but you know, we we'll really want this to be a nice um, interactive session eventually. And so short sort of presentations up front and then hopefully a nice um, informative question time. So um, really appreciate everyone coming on and especially you Cole and um, really excited to get out there later on this year. So we'll have some updated uh, footage and stuff coming from Colin's place um, later on this year. So uh, hopefully those natives are up and cranking. <laughs> yeah. And check out the new machine as well and, and how the results have turned out with that. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Mm, ne yep. Never never too old to buddy keep innovating, are you, Cole? No, you... <laughs> no can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. All right, gang. Um, Therese, is, is there anything else you want to chuck in? Um, well. Well, no, it's been, it's been very helpful. Thanks very much. Awesome. I've enjoyed the presentation. Thanks, Colin. Thank you. Fantastic. All right, Cole. Well, I think I think we'll wrap that up. And um, and until next time, we'll stay in touch. And yeah, thanks again, everyone. And to everyone that is watching the replay, make sure you get on the next one and get your questions to Colin because it's what an invaluable resource to have this man at our disposal yeah. um, like this. So thank yeah. you, Colin. 
I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah.